One day, Gandhi was getting on a train with his friend, and they were running a little bit late, so the train was already starting to move away from the station. And as they hopped onto the train, one of Gandhi's sandals fell off and landed by the track. Now, we would probably go, no, and worry all day long that we lost our shoe. But without hesitation, Gandhi took off his other sandal and threw it off by the track. And his friend said, Gandhi, what did you do? I can't do the accent. (laughs) Now you are barefoot. He said, yes, but the man who finds the one shoe will now be happy that he has a pair to wear. All of us have things of value that we can share with others, like those sandals. When we have a hallway meeting or a casual encounter with someone and we share a little bit with them, that's kind of on accident. It's like the first sandal that falls off. But when we turn that superficial conversation into something meaningful, that's the second sandal. That's when we're giving on purpose, not on accident. Now, some of you might be great piano players or be able to cook. I'm able to eat. Some of you have the secrets of being a great spouse or parent that you can share with others. My experience and my talent happens to be in business and entrepreneurship. This local Garden Grove paper in 1972 printed this article of three kids who started their own own organization to help fight pollution in their neighborhood. On the left is Craig, the secretary of the organization, nine years old, and next-door neighbor. On the right is Scott, only six years old, serving as vice president, (laughs) and my brother. Yes, that's me in the middle. I was nine years old when I started that foundation. That started a spark of all of my years of business experience as an entrepreneur. I've built some great companies And I've also crashed some to the ground at raging speeds. So that qualifies me as a true entrepreneur. I've learned so much over the years, ever since I was a little kid. And kids are creative, very creative. Philo invented the precursor to the television set that we now watch at age 15. Another 15-year-old got hurt in an accident and he couldn't see out of one of his eyes. Lewis invented a way for blind people to read. And Frank, at age 11, kind of on accident, invented the popsicle, for which we're all grateful for on a hot summer day. And this toy truck was patented, yes, I said patented, by a six-year-old named Robert in 1963. And it's not just a regular toy truck, it's transformable in 1963. Now, kids don't lack on ideas, they don't lack in passion, and they don't lack in energy. What we found with young entrepreneurs, the only two things they usually lack in are business experience and confidence. Now, they get experience from or knowledge from us in seminars and classes that we teach, but they gain confidence through a matchmaking program we have where we match them up with a mentor who helps them as they build their business. You can do the same thing. You can provide knowledge and confidence by sharing information about what you do, what you're good at, and by building a mentoring relationship. We have a responsibility to help our next generation if we truly want to help change the world. There's a lot of stories of one person being helped by another person who was a mentor. I'd like to share with you one story of mine. The very first time that we put on 
an entrepreneurship seminar a few years back. We were working our way around the room, and kids were sharing their experience, ages 18 to 25, with lemonade stands or helping with a garage sale, selling stuff online, selling chocolates for school. Then it became Eduardo's turn to speak. Eduardo had his arms folded, had his chair scooted back from the table, and was slightly looking down. He looked up at me slowly and said, I just got out of the big house last week, two years and eight months. I was the mastermind of a gang that was stealing cars and dealing drugs. Does that work? And he looked at me with a look that I felt was a look expecting it. <laughs> no, <laughs> that doesn't work. But instead, I complimented him on his ability to move a product and build a team. <laughs> I told him, Eduardo, so far you have more experience here than anybody else. You just have to learn how to do it within the limits of the law. And then I casually moved on to the next kid, a young lady who was sharing her experiences. While she was sharing her experiences, I saw Eduardo sit up, unfold his arms, and scoot up to the table. I venture to say that it had probably been a really long time since Eduardo had heard a yes. We discovered during that seminar that Eduardo had a passion for cars. <laughs> he just had to learn how to fix them and then give them back. Eduardo is a perfect example of a kid who is ready to be mentored, who is ready to learn. And it, over these years, we've spent some time talking about how to raise money to get your tools, how to do other things, and that mentoring process has worked well for him. However, it was not always easy. Eduardo called me up one day with a problem. He had a customer who had a car stuck at their house that wouldn't run, and we're wondering if he could pick it up. So he went to a friend's house and borrowed his trailer, towing trailer, and picked up the car and brought it to his house, was working on it. And that day, his parole officer happened to just come by and check on him. Well, guess what? That trailer that he had borrowed from his friend had been listed as stolen. So he was calling me from jail. Myself and some others who had helped mentor him along the way helped write some letters to help him out. Well, he's doing well. He's continuing to build his car repair business. In fact, he's looking for a shop in the L.A. area because he's negotiating a deal with somebody who likes to buy cars at auctions, fix them up, and sell them. I'm proud of him. And this is the first time that I've ever shared Eduardo's story while he's sitting in the audience. <laughs> so where, where does our hope for the future really lie? Where is our best hope? I say that it's with the kids that are at risk, who have been through challenges. But let's define at risk for a moment. There's people that are obviously at risk, but we read almost every day about kids that were A students or student leaders or the star athlete that are doing drugs or commit suicide. You know what I say? All kids are at risk. And that's where our hope lies for the future. Now the spotlight is on us, on me and on you sitting here at this TEDx event. What can we do to help change the world through our next generation? Now let me clarify something. Am I talking to an audience that's mostly adults? Oh no, I'm not. No. I'm talking to the kid inside of you that is masquerading as an adult 
here in this room. I'm talking to the kid who has survived successfully your own at-risk childhood and learned a lot from it. I'm talking to the kid inside of you who still has dreams and hopes and loves to share what you love to do. That's who I'm talking to. And if you're still a kid listening to this, don't worry about it. There's a lot of younger kids than you that you'll be able to be mentoring. In fact, right now while I'm talking, I'm sure there's babies being born somewhere. So you'll get your chance. Jim mentioned that when I came out here, I was going to tell you how to change the world. And we can change the world if we help to appreciate and to serve our upcoming generation. Well, how can you do that? I'll give you three easy steps. The first is you've got to find a young person. So how do you do that? If, if you've got your own kids, then start thinking about their friends. Could one of them benefit from a great conversation with you? You know your kids won't listen to you, so go for their friends. <laughs> How about some kids at church or in your community? I want you to be thinking about them right now, and I I'm giving you an assignment right now I want you to do. I want you to put one of those kids' faces in your head right now because this is your assignment when you leave here is to find out if that kid is ready to be mentored or not. You got it? I got time. <laughs> Keep that face in your head when you leave here because that's who you're going to talk with first. Second step is engage with them. Get eye to eye with them. Let the kid inside of you talk with the kid in front of you. Let them build a strong relationship. Let them benefit from one another. And last, I want you to share your time and share your heart with them. Build a mentoring relationship. You don't have to be their buddy-buddy. I don't know if we're buddy-buddy, Eduardo, maybe. <laughs> By that laugh, I can tell I'm a good mentor. Share that time with them. Now, how can you remember this when you're done listening to me speak? Yes is right. Yes means give them both of your sandals because they need something to wear when they walk into the future generations of their own. They'll thank you, and you will have done something to help change the world. One person can change the world if they only make a world of change in one person.